Hi there. In this video, I'm going to try and transform this Xiaomi switch into an outdoor switch by using this, which will be 100% waterproof and ready for use in rain, snow and whatever uh, the weather throws at it. For a little background on why I'm doing this, I will link in the description a video where I actually bought um, a, a, a bell, no, not bell, a doorbell, that's the correct term I wasn't uh, able to find in my mind, that was rated for outdoor use. The reality is that, uh, well, it wasn't because it stopped working in two weeks or something like that, I don't remember exactly, but close to no time and that was expensive so i got really annoyed found out about these things and weird automations i'm not going to go into that too deeply i have other things on my plate now but i got this really cheap because somebody has used and abused it as you can see some gaps all around I think there are some cracks in some areas, so this thing has been opened up, somebody poked around with it, I don't care about that, it's still working, the guy that sold it to me told me he tried to modify it, make its own uh, 3D printed case, weird things, he, yeah, he basically does things like I do, change, modify everything, repair everything, anyway, this is still working for what I needed, a doorbell, perfect. Bought this little guy, again, really cheap, but this is not rated for outdoor use. Water will get into it and it will destroy it. Also, I'm not quite sure how it, uh, the little battery inside of it will respond to really cold weather. Might get too weak to actually send uh, the Zigbee uh, signal to this to ring the doorbell. Well, this is where this switch comes in. It's a 100% outdoor uh, switch, if you need any info about it, well, let me try and give you everything that we have on this. It's a, a part of a big uh, Panasonic brand, Vico, I think, or something like that, and it's a doorbell switch. It's meant, obviously, to be wired, that's why we have this... Uh, rubber uh, gaskets in here to cut them and put your wire through there no we will be modifying it and inside of this we will have the electronics presumably i don't think the whole switch but at least the electronics and i think a cr123 bigger 3 volt battery that will replace the really small coin cell inside of this so we'll have plenty of power even in really cold days and in theory wearing this outside in rain snow frost whatever and this rings inside in warmth and uh, obviously zero humidity because this is not good in uh, any kind of weather so this is for inside use only many many full moons later finally i have time to do this project uh, yeah, I was just checking what kind of batteries I could put in this thing. This works with a uh, oh, 3 volt uh, battery, the little button that we are going to be tearing apart to put in here. So we kind of need 3 volts. Now, first variant would be something like this, somehow to find a way to squeeze one in here and one up top uh, and uh, link wires between them. This, uh, I'm not sure what's the capacity, but uh, yeah, it's obviously lower than something like this, for example. So, next idea, hmm, I can maybe squeeze something like this if I cut from the plastic a lot and one up top and make connections. These have 2800 milliamp hours and they will be in series, so the milliamp hour stays the same, 2800, but we get three volts. 
Okay, so the capacity of this is 1600 million power. So 1600 uh, versus uh, 2800. We are almost getting double the capacity with uh, these two batteries so i will find a way to put them in here not to mention that they are cheaper than this one and i have uh, this one i can use in my uh, smoke sensors so expensive i will keep it for that cheap bigger capacity let's put it in here and being industrial they should uh, fare uh, fairly well with the outside uh, cold temperatures. I've used them in the past and they went well. Okay, made some progress. As you can see, the battery is wobbling in there. Everything is in place. So this corner is dremeled out and I would need to dremel out the same in here. This part right here, all of that, obviously I don't need the ground. So this ground can go away this edge right here the rib but realize something having this battery in here like this and having another one right there i'm not left with a lot of space in here so i really need to see how the pcb in this thing uh, looks like so uh, i will be doing a bit of uh, disassembling at this moment I don't remember how this comes out. I also don't want to push the button because wife and daughters are sleeping and I uh, had the stupid idea to uh, connect this to the main base station or whatever you want to call it. So that would uh, create noise in the house and uh, it's the last thing I want to do. But, and I think I just did it. Wife will not be pleased with this. Can I get it out without any more noise? Yeah, I think I can. Whew. Ah, now we have yeah, a warranty sticker right here and wife already contacting me did this beep again even if it doesn't have the battery yeah <clears throat> problem is solved i think it had um, enough energy left for one last uh, uh, beep even without the battery at least that's what i heard so uh, that's nice it means it really basically almost consumes anything or nothing whatever you want to call it so I kind of need to unlatch all of these clips. Okay, my idea, unclip one and put a spacer between, camera focus please, between the plastic and the PCB, then try to unclip the next one while, uh, this is not easy to do. Let's do this. Hopefully I'm not destroying everything in here. But then again, as I told you, in theory, yeah, this one remains uh, unclipped because I played with it for a little bit. Okay, in theory, this cannot clip back. This one, it's unclipped and it doesn't seem to be clipping back. Let's undo more of them. And I think this should be the last. Are we out? What's holding it? Something went back in. So maybe huh, make this into two to have a bigger spacer. Yeah, this is not easy to take apart. If you find a, any other way Please let us know in the comments because this uh, is not that easy. Yep, 
Weirdly enough, okay, we are unclipped now, but what's next? Am I destroying this? Oh, you know what? I think uh, it was not necessary what I did here. We also have some clips on the side. So, yeah. Actually, no. Both variants need to be un unclipped. Also the side ones from this and the internal ones at the same time. And I like what I see. The PCB is quite tiny. So I might be in luck. Uh, other clips. Really? How many of you are there? Do not destroy your PCB. No matter what you do. This PCB is quite small. Hopefully small enough for what we need in here. It's locked. Ah, it has a pin right in the corner. Corner of a circle, yeah. <laughs> Edge and this. So we still have the LED, we still have the uh, reset button, the link, the whatever you want to call it. Okay, and we have the main switch. Try not to put your fingers too much on the sensitive small parts in here. And we have the tiny antenna right here. Main chip again. Okay, and I think this is the capacitor that held the charge in it. I'm expecting. If any of you actually let me bring the light. If any of you need this info and this will help you. Here you are. Now let me figure this out. Made a bit more progress and changed my mind. So we will be having the battery uh, way down low in here. Another one up there. But the space in the middle, I took a really good look at this, was not really used. It was just reinforcement, which I basically do not really need for my uh, uh, switch, will, which will be ringing once a month probably, so it's stiff enough uh, even without the reinforcement in this area. This is going in here quite nicely, still working perfectly, still aligning, still that, so I didn't change anything, but this little guy also now has room to go in here like this, underneath everything. and. It, this is all fitting way too nicely. I'm I'm waiting for the moment when something uh, doesn't go according to plan because it always happens. Look at this. We have that gap right there. It almost perfectly aligns with the capacitor. We have another bigger capacitor. Those two are the tallest on this PCB. Almost aligns with this one. I just need to make them a tiny bit bigger and this will go closer to the PCB. And the tallest thing will be the switch itself but doesn't matter because I will put uh, hot glue in here and then put it down there after I have wires soldered to the switch wires that will be going into this side because only this side is populated. This as you can see no metal so this is doesn't have a contact in here. This could be made into a double switch but we only have a single variant of it. So two wires from these sides going onto the two sides of the switch making a contact, this goes in here like this and I have my pairing button in case I need it in the future, I have my pairing LED to see, I have the contacts for the battery and I can make longer wires and then push everything back in here and close it up and basically we are done. This is done, uh, grind it down everything that would uh, touch first 
and now it's laying flat in here it's perfect for what uh, we need switch still working its clips are basically on the side so it doesn't really care about what I took down from in here unsoldered uh, the what is it the positive connector actually on this particular battery because the huge side is positive and this small one is negative on these coin cells so unsoldered that careful not to damage the board itself but needed to be heated up quite a lot with this huge thing overkill way overkill and hard to use but uh, yeah Anyway, I'm used to it from uh, good old uh, communist days. Now let's switch this to buzzing mode and somehow, oh, this is gonna be tricky because these thingies are quite compact. I wanna see what I need, where I need to solder wires. Yeah, it's not that easy because this with this are the same not necessarily ground I took a better look this with this are the same so when pushing the switch it also closes between this and this but also between this and this and also between this and this obviously okay and being this black PCB, I see something that goes right to this pad from that resistor, I think. But it's extremely hard to know exactly what and where is connected. So what are we doing and where are we soldering? This is gonna be fun. Next step will be soldering some really thin wires with... Uh, this TS100 soldering uh, iron is it still a soldering iron? Basically, it's a mini portable soldering station. I have no idea how to call it, but uh, it works really well. On the batteries, I will also solder. Not sure if this can do it. I will try with it because I want to heat up the batteries as less as possible. You can even wrap them up in, in a bit of uh, wet uh, towel or something like that but maybe it's not necessary i will try to solve that really really quickly and use really thin wires but um, what am i searching i need a bit of uh, i never knew how this was called it similar to flux but uh, it's kind of uh, solid and I ran out of space on my camera, so I'm not sure how much it did. The wires are ready now, too much solder on the tip. And let's see what we can do. Give this thing a bit of a power on, it should. My phone just rang, so yeah, <laughs> that interrupted me. Uh, what I don't like about this soldering iron, I need to put something in here something round because it's really hard to get your uh, hard not hard at all really easy to get your fingers onto that never done it but uh, uh, could maybe happen at one point let's get a bit of uh, fresh solder on this drop it again because it was way too much actually maybe not because i do need to to get some of it in here current me is wondering why did I unsolder the battery terminal before uh, I finished playing around with uh, this and testing so anyway positive negative
shouldn't uh, there be any light on this? Hmm. Was expecting to get the light when uh, I connected the battery. Let me see if this works. But smart me has that uh, in another room. So I will go ask the wife if it rang or not. Oh, I heard it. It rang. Yep, I heard it. It rang. So everything is connected properly. Now we just, instead of this 3 volt battery, we connect our uh, proper batteries. Let me see. Will it rang once more? You need to believe me, it is ringing. When this will be done, I'm going next to, to that that is plugged in. Yeah, it rang once. So the capacitor is holding enough of a charge to rang once without a battery. Cool. Anyway, so again, this is how I soldered it. It was a pain because it was not properly heating up. This one is actually ground. This pin right here is actually ground and it was quite hard to solder. But now it's properly soldered, both of them. So this will be getting the hot glue treatment now. I don't want these wires uh, becoming uh, broken because if you move them too much, they will get broken. And uh, something like this but i will see which direction uh, i benefit actually no i don't benefit at all white wire will be coming uh, down to the lower connection and blue wire will be going up to the higher connection and this will be coming in like this yes obviously it will not be flash anymore but i could actually yeah i'm smart i can make two channels, one in this direction and one in this direction for the wires to get outside of this uh, board. Before gluing this in place, uh, I need to make sure, yes, this will dry up its alcohol, 99% alcohol. I need to make sure there uh, are no traces of uh, flux or something like that, uh, which could corrode in here. I don't intend to <laughs> Uh, revisit this uh, anytime soon with the two huge batteries that we are putting in so better safe than sorry some alcohol to remove everything bad from this board this will uh, go away quite quickly the alcohol when we introduce the hot glue and the two channels that I was talking about, this and this. So from the switch, we are going into the channels and uh, the PCB will stay almost flush. It's almost flush, good enough for me. One last test, everything seems to fit. Uh, now let's put some hot glue, not a lot of it. I prefer to put it on the top. This is just a tiny bit because uh, who knows? if everything continues to go well. It is going well at the moment, but uh, we never know, do we? At least for the moment, we are glued in. So at this point I will... Uh, let me think, where can I put some hot glue without interfering? And I think here I can put... Because there was plastic here that I basically removed myself. So this shouldn't affect anything. That's good. And I will put one on the other side, but 
Uh, let me get rid of these wires just for a moment. And now everything should be able to, to stay properly in place. You might be wondering what I did here, where our wires are too thin for this particular type of connector. So I wrapped it around the uh, thicker wire, I will solder it and cut the thicker wire. And this is how it looks like. Maybe I should have uh, checked if I can actually get it in there first. But it's a bit too late now, so uh, I am doing this in a way or another. And it is going in there. I was lucky. So simply find a way to push it with something without destroying whatever you have in here. And my daughter's <laughs> searching for me. Maybe you can hear them in the background. And perfect. Now let's do the other one exactly the same, hopefully. Let's give this another test. So positive white, negative blue and you need to trust me that I can hear this uh, ringing. It rang. <laughs> so it's working. Let me try again. Yep, it's working. I hate it that uh, it's uh, plugged into something else and uh, the range of it is not enough for me to bring it here. Uh, yeah, Wi-Fi stuff. But uh, we will get close to it in a moment. Batteries are a bit tricky to solder onto because you cannot heat them up too much. So uh, on the negative on this one, it was not a really good connection. So what I normally do, I scratch the surface as well as I can to go over that uh, nickel or chrome layer. I'm not sure what the layer on top is. And then if it's scratched properly, it will solder much better. Normally, even on this end, you can do the same. But uh, actually here, you can also do it like this. This end is quite exposed, so <laughs> much easier to make sure your solder will, will stick to it properly. But... Uh, from what I see on this one, it did stick quite well. You cannot rip this apart. So it is soldered. On this one, it's scratched. I'm going to scratch this one also and then continue soldering. What also helps a lot, just a tiny bit, bit of uh, this type of flux, but just a tiny bit. Don't leave residue in there. Just, just show it to the battery more. You can see that I'm still keeping it in here. It's barely touching the battery, so almost nothing is remaining on it. And this also helps. Maybe one day I will learn the real name of this particular uh, solder but uh, actually not solder flux or whatever this is I I have it from the Romanian communist uh, era and it's working awesome honestly first time with these batteries let me see if I can hit it Yes, I can hear it. It's working with our big Vartas. Awesome. Let's put everything in the box and we are quite done. Okay, now about the switch. As you can see, there is no seal around it. So it's basically relying on the fact that water uh, 
if it gets in it will just go all around and drip down but these two big holes they don't help me absolutely at all so i am going to basically glue these things uh, these rubber things in place so at least all of this all around it's not an entry point for water the rest it's just as uh, the rest of the case so yeah there's that i'd be 54 okay top part is kind of good it will be pressed a bit more when i close it uh, bottom part i need to clean it so i am in a bit of a hurry if you want to say that and now yes the batteries might touch the glue but this is not strong enough in my opinion to be able to uh, hold them in there so i cannot get them out next time i uh, i will do a battery replacement hopefully in a few good years I'll just close this. Ooh, that didn't go that well. I need to hold this in place, don't I? Yeah, and this one also. It's attempting to push it out, and our little box is closed. Next step, put this thingy in, it's in now, and it's ringing, and it's the second day, the glue has dried up, at this point the switch is done. And any water that's trying to enter it uh, through this gap right here, it will just go down and drip out. Because this has a chamfer to it from both sides, so this exactly is the lowest point. So it cannot go in and under or something like that. No, it will do it down from here. <clears throat> and from this part again, it will drip down through here, through this edge lower. So we are done. Now you can glue it to your wall, you can use the two holes to attach it with screws. Uh, basically you simply kind of uh, pull this out. Let me use a flat head. With a, without a flat head it cannot really be done. Come on. So as you can see any water that enters this area, again going through the edges and dripping down through here. There's nowhere for it to, to stay in another place. Let's open up these two screws. Remove these protections. Oh, didn't I open up enough? Maybe I didn't open enough. <clears throat> Why are you not going? Stubborn little one, aren't you? Yeah, now it's unlocked. And it might bind for me just a tiny bit because of the glue, or might not. Hmm, I don't think it... Uh, no, it doesn't bind. So, the glue residue we can take off because it was already half dried when I put the lid on, so it doesn't, uh, did, didn't uh, glue to the lid itself. And uh, that's about it. Battery is not really moving. They are held in place with uh, this thing. And we are done. We have our exterior switch with uh, big battery bat backup. And uh, finally did what couldn't be bought. And if you are thinking uh, or opening up your switch for a different reason and you want to close it back up, uh, make sure you can see these pins. So they are next to the clips, but one of them doesn't have a pin. This one doesn't have a pin. So make sure the clip without a hole goes in here. 
obviously yes you will have your pcb in there for me uh, that pcb is in another place now and this is closed up it is moving so everything is in working order but we don't have a pcb in there to make the clicky sound anymore i'm also going to put this in here just so i don't lose it and uh, basically no, no, this aligns uh, with this, you can see it here. So like that and rotate it. That's about it. This is just, just a case. This will be going on the wall. And uh, let me get you close to see that this is actually working. Close to the, uh, the base station and this video will not show how you pair the button to your base station and stuff like that. There are lots of videos uh, on YouTube for that. For me, it was just building this switch. This was the part that uh, wasn't anywhere on the internet. And now also for you to hear, but beware, it might be a bit loud. So it's working and that's about it for the video. I'm going to go put it on the wall and for you maybe check out uh, any of my other videos and see you in the next one. Bye.